In this experiment, we are trying to determine the calcium content in bread. I start out with weighing three slices of the white bread I'm using on a balance and noting down their weights. I will use these three weights to determine the average mass of a slice. In the balance room, I put a 400 milliliter beaker onto the analytical balance and then tear the balance. I need to weigh out between two and three grams of bread for this experiment. So I put a chunk into the beaker to see where I'm at and might add a bit more. It doesn't really matter how much bread I have, as long as I write down the exact weight of bread in my beaker. Next step is I label my beaker with my initials so that I can tell it apart from the others later on in the fume hood. I grab a watch glass and my beaker and head towards the fume hood where I add the nitric acid into my beaker. This is done with the dispense set which allows for contact free delivery of the acid into my beaker. This is needed to dissolve my bread in a process called digestion. I put the beaker on top of a hot plate and it will sit on the hot plate together with the other samples for about 35 minutes until the bread is fully dissolved. After the reaction time I remove the beaker carefully from the hot plate and remove the watch glass to let the gas escape. At the bench I prepare a 100 ml volumetric flask and a filter set up. So I take a filter paper, fold it in half and fold it in half again to create a cone. that I can put into my funnel. With this I head to the fume hood again where I set up my filtration for the bread solution. I pour the cooled off solution that contained the dissolved bread into the filter and rinse the beaker with small amounts of distilled water to make sure I transfer all the calcium that is left behind in the beaker into my filter. And then I let it run through. So all the samples will be sitting there filtering what is left behind is some yellow go in my filter paper. I remove the filter and funnel and then fill up my volumetric flask with distilled water to the line. I can squeeze it or pour some in, maybe give a little mix towards the end. I stop and add the last little bit of volume with a dropper to make sure I get the exact volume with the meniscus sitting on the line. Put a stopper on and invert the flask a number of times to make sure the contents are mixed well. Once all the solutions are ready, the flasks will be lined up next to the instrument. Before we measure the absorbances, we need to prepare standards. So 
So I start out with a 1000 ppm calcium stock solution and I need to prepare my standards in 100 milliliter volumetric flask. So how much of my stock solution do I need to add to the flask? I pour some of the stock solution into a clean beaker just for the ease of handling. I grab a micro pipette and set this to the correct volume for my 10 ppm standard stock solution. I add a clean tip to my micro pipette and then measure out the 1000 ppm stock into my volumetric flask. Next, I head to the fume hood and add 50 milliliters of nitric acid into my volumetric flask. This is to ensure that the standard solutions are close in composition to the actual sample solutions, which also contain nitric acid. I fill the flask to the line with distilled water. As usual, when approaching the line, I use a dropper to add the last little bit of water and look at the fill level at eye level to ensure the meniscus sits exactly on the line. Again I have to invert the flask several times to make sure the solution is mixed well. This will need to be repeated for all the standards as well as a blank. And then they will be lined up next to our sample solutions at the instrument. Here is the AS instrument working with one of the key components being the flame that atomizes our sample. The samples are sucked through a little piece of tubing into the flame.